The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of worry, plenty of mystery, and crippling bureaucracy galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Gang, we've got a special announcement from your old pal, Superman. Fellows and girls, now that we've run out of those nifty shell casings, we thought we'd take this opportunity to put our swell prizes program on a back burner for a bit. Yeah, uh, not that we think you should involve any kind of burners in your exploration of... Th that is, when you're coming up with different ways to... Well, well, kids, fire is not a good... What I'm trying to say is we have a super special item coming your way that we think will make your bat soup experience even more fun and exciting. You see, as we take a behind-the-scenes pause to put together some new best practices for distributing our swell prizes, we didn't want you to feel like the fun was ending. No, far from it. So, fellows and girls, starting right now, we want you to start saving those lids from all the cans of Never nutritious, definitely delicious bat soup that you eat. Now keep them someplace safe because you'll want to have them handy when the time comes, and that time will be soon. Thank you. Superman is right, gang. Those nifty can lids with the swell bat soup logo printed right on them are about to be worth their weight in. Well, you'll find out soon. So get to collecting, gang, and be sure that Mom has you well stocked on bat soup. Available wherever fine podcasts are sold. Backpedaling is still peddling. And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure, part one of The Story of the Century, as originally broadcast on April 1st, 1946. Kill the super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and ability far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today we begin a brand new adventure for the Man of Steel, an adventure that is jam-packed with suspense and mystery. We'll learn more about it in a moment, but right now I see that Dan McCullough is waiting to talk to you. Go ahead, Dan. You know, gang, I never saw anything like the way you fellows and girls were going all out for that new second series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Why, all the kids in our block are planning how they're going to pin these buttons in the new second series on their jacket or dress or cap. And the kids in the schoolyard and over at the playground are plenty busy, too, showing off the buttons they've collected so far and swapping duplicates each other. And no wonder, because in the first place, these new Pep comic buttons are doggone slick-looking. Full comic strip colors on a clear white background. Why, the pictures of your funny sheet favorites really stand out. And each one of those pictures is really true to life, straight from the funny papers. There's uh, Maggie and Jigs and, and Popeye and Superman, of course. And you'll want to collect all 18 of these new buttons. You can, too. Pure, easy as can be. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just ask Mom to get you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep, and look for your prize inside the package. There's a comic button, a prize for you, in every package of P-E-P-P. -E Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek and Omaha. Now, the adventures of Superman. At 10 o'clock at night, very much excited, Editor Perry White phoned Clark Kent, telling him to pick up Lois Lane and come to his suburban home at once. He urged Kent to be extremely careful, said it was a matter of life or death, and then hung up. Mystified, Kent drove to Lois's apartment house, where Morrissey, the doorman, said Lois was waiting for him. But the girl reporter failed to answer the switchboard phone, and Kent and Morrissey went up to her apartment. 
They found the door unlocked and the apartment looking as though a cyclone had struck it. The rug was shoved into a corner. Tables and lamps were overturned. And Lois was missing. Listen. Someone got in here, overpowered Miss Lane, and took her away, Morrissey. Oh, Mother of Mercy, who'd want to be doing that? I don't know. Did anyone else go up to her apartment this evening? Uh, uh, No, sir. I was on the door all evening. You know, we don't let strangers in unless we announce them to the tenant first. Well, then whoever it was must have come up the fire escape at the rear of the building. Miss Lane was carried out that way, too. Oh, oh blessed saints. Look, you say she called you on the house phone a little while ago? And not more than 15 or 20 minutes ago it was, Mr. Kent. Well, didn't any of the other tenants on this floor complain about the noise in this apartment? No, sir, nobody complained. Not a soul. That's strange. I don't understand it. Miss Lane is such a fine young lady. Who'd want to be harming her now? I don't know, Morrissey. Maybe Mr. White does. Look, I'll tell you what you do, uh, Morrissey. You question the tenants on both sides of this apartment and across the hall. Find out if they heard anything. I'll phone Mr. White. Uh, had we, hadn't we better be calling the police? No, not yet. Mr. White may be able to give me a lead. Now, the plan. Oh, I want Brentwood 6242. Brentwood 6242. Yes, and hurry it, please. It's very urgent. Get going, Morrissey. Uh, okay, okay. Hello? Is that you, Chief? Yeah. Who's this? Clark Kent. Listen, Chief, I want to ask... Why wake me up at this hour of the night? Waking you up? I thought you were waiting. Oh, well, never mind. Look, Chief, uh, something's happened. What do you mean? I'm afraid something's happened to Lois. To Lois? Yes. What? Well, what happened? Tell me. Well, I stopped at her apartment to pick her up, as you told me to. I told and... you to. Well, of course. Don't you remember? I told you to pick her up? On the telephone, not more than half an hour ago. I was asleep half an hour ago. All right, all right. Call it 40 minutes. I was asleep at 9 o'clock. Almost ten thirty now. What? What's this about Lois? Uh, what happened to her? Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you didn't phone me this evening and tell me to pick Lois up and get her out to your house as soon as possible? Of course I didn't. I didn't call anyone. I was in bed at nine o'clock. Well, then someone impersonated you. Impersonated me? Apparently, someone who imitated your voice perfectly phoned me, told me to pick up Lois and get out to your house as quickly as possible. I came to Lois's apartment, found it all ripped up as if a terrific battle had taken place, and Lois missing. What? Yes. Maybe you better get over here right away, Chief. Where are you? At Lois's apartment. Or what's left of it. Did you call Inspector Henderson? No, not yet. I, I thought maybe Never that... Mind what you thought. Call him at once. I'll be there in half an hour. Okay. Gosh, I, I can't understand Mr. this. Mr. Kent. Oh, yes, Morrissey. Did you find out anything? No, sir. I spoke to Mr. and Mrs. Seaman on this side and to Dr. Lewis across the hall. Yes. They were home all evening and they said they didn't hear no sound of fighting. They heard nothing? No, sir. But the walls and the floors in this building are very thick, you know. Well, just the same. Someone should have heard something. Did you, did you call the police yet? I'm calling Inspector Henderson now. Something very strange about all this, Morrissey. Why should anyone impersonate Mr. White in order to get me over? Puzzled and anxious, Kent calls Inspector Henderson, who hurries to Lois's apartment. Joined by Perry White, the three men search throughout the night for some clue to Lois's mysterious disappearance. But without success. Early the next morning, Jimmy Olsen and Perry White are in the latter's office at the Daily Planet. Oh, why doesn't Henderson call? What kind of a police department is he running? Take it easy, Chief. I'm sure Henderson's doing all he can. He's not doing enough. He should have found Lois by now. Gosh, I, I hope she's all right. But I'm now, don't afraid... don't you start blubbering, Jim. But Miss Lane's been gone almost 12 hours. No, I know, and there's not a single clue as to... Well, well, let me... I've got it. Hello, Mr. White's office. Is that you, Clark? Lois, is it you? Lois, 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 did you just... Did you take me just a minute, Lois? Please, Chief. Jim, be quiet. I can't hear her. Are you all right, Lois? Of course I'm all right. Is the Chief there? Well, yes, but what happened to you? Where are you? I'm at 407 Clover Street. 407 Clover Street? Write that down, Olsen. Yes, now look. Clark, tell the Chief I need $10,000 in cash at once. $10,000? You mean you're being held for ransom? Held for no, ransom? No, Quick, Olsen. Call Inspector Henderson. Okay. Oh, golly. It's a terrific story, and I need 10000 Just a minute, Lois. Uh, come back, Jim. She's all right. She is. Yes. But Mr. White just said... Never mind what I said. Well, what's going on, Kent? Oh, I'll give you that little... Oh, wait a minute, please, will you? Clark. Okay, Lois. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We've been terribly worried, though. What happened to you last night? Nothing happened to me. Now, listen for a but minute. But your apartment, you? it was all ripped up. Clark, if you don't stop interrupting me, I will scream. But, but I, I, I... Oh, all right, all right. What were you saying? I said to tell the chief that I'm working on the story of the century. It'll make Jimmy's trip to the moon look like two cents. But I need $10,000 in cash at once. What for? For the story, stupid. Tell the chief and hurry. Okay, hold on. Uh, Lois says she's on a terrific story and needs $10,000 in cash. $10,000? What for? For the, for the story, stupid. What? 
I'm quoting Lois. That's what she told me. Tell her no. Tell no story is worth that much money. I heard that, Clark. Now tell the chief this story or scoop the world. But if he wants to be a piker, I know the Daily Blade will be glad to pay twice 10000 for it. And I heard that. Tell her she can go jump in a... No, no, no. Don't tell her that. No, no. I'm not buying any $10,000 pig in the poke. Tell her to stay where she is. I'll be right down with the money, but she'll have to show me before I pay. Did you hear that, Lois? Yes, I heard it. But tell him to hurry, Clark. Every minute counts. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. 407 Clover Street. That right? Right. Now, wait, Chief. I'll go with no, you. No, no. You stay here, Kent. But I, I want... This story is all Lois says it is. I want you to be here to take it over the phone. Yes, I know, but... an old edition. Well, uh, wait a minute. Ten o'clock, Mr. Kent. I know. Mr. White doesn't call pretty soon. We'll miss the noon edition. Well, Clover Street's a good hour's ride from here, Jim. He's been gone an hour and a half. Gosh, I wonder what this big story of Miss Lane's is. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe we'll find out now. Hello, Kent speaking. Kent, listen to me. Got the story, Chief? No, no, I haven't got it yet. I need another $10,000. What? You heard me. Tell Darwin to draw $10,000 from the bank at once and you rush it down here. Are you serious? You bet I'm serious. Get that money and rush it down here. We're at 407 Clover Street, Mrs. Boss's rooming house. You got that? Yes, I've got it, but Chief... I can't talk anymore. I'm being watched. What? So long. Wait a minute. Who was that, Mr. White? Yes. He says he needs another $10,000. Leaping lizards. I can't figure this out, Jim. Who are you calling on the intercom? Darwin, the cashier. Oh. Yes, Mr. White? Oh, this is Clark Kent, Darwin. Mr. White just called. He wants you to draw $10,000 from the bank at once. Another $10,000? That's right. Take care of it right away, will you? But but this is most unusual, Mr. Kent. Uh, what what account is this to be charged to? Oh, I don't know. Editorial, I guess. Oh, you guess? You can straighten it out with Mr. White later. But I can't draw a large sum like that, Mr. Kent, without knowing which account is to be charged to. Now listen, Darwin. The chief says this is very important. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent, but you must understand my position. Well... I'm answerable to our stockholders and the publisher. I know. I can't I... possibly issue a voucher for $10,000 without knowing which account has to be charged well, to. Now, wait a minute. What will Clark Kent do now? Harry White said every moment is precious. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, it seems like there are more reasons than you can shake a stick at why you fellows and girls go all out for Kellogg's Pep. First off, there's the doggone good eating in that sunny golden toasted cereal. The spoonful after spoonful of crispy freshness and real wide awake flavor. Then there's the sound nourishment in Kellogg's Pep. More than twice as much of an energy vitamin B1 as in sun-ripened whole wheat. Plus, your whole daily minimum need of vitamin D. And that D vitamin is the sunshine vitamin. Helps build strong bones and teeth in growing youngsters like you. And, of course, there are the swell prizes you get. A comic button in every package of Pep. Eighteen different pictures of your favorite funny paper characters done up in brilliant red and yellow and blue and black. Mighty snappy looking and so easy to get. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these comic buttons anywhere. You get them the easy way by asking Mom to keep you supplied with plenty of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. There's a bright colored comic button in every package. Just ask Mom for P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Mr. Darwin, the Daily Planet's cashier, has refused to give Clark Kent $10,000 to bring to Perry White. In his office, Kent says to Jimmy Olsen... We're in a spot, Jim. Darwin won't draw the money without a direct order from Mr. White. And according to the chief, every moment is precious. Well, Jeepers, what do we do? Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. The chief will have to call Darwin. Look, you go into the city room, call information, and get the phone number for Mrs. Walsh's rooming house... At 407 Clover Street. Uh-huh. I want to keep my line open in case Mr. White calls back. This is Walsh's rooming house, 407 Clover. All right, hurry it up, will you, Jim? As fast as I can. Good. I better warn Darwin to stand by, I guess. Now, see here, Hello. Mr. Kent, there's no use arguing. Now, wait a minute. I'm giving you my decision, and that's fine. Keep your shirt on, Darwin. I just wanted to Your's tell you that... Your reporters are all the same. You don't seem to realize that a newspaper is a business organization. I realize it. I only want... to issue a watch for $10,000. Now, look. $10,000, mind you, and not wait a minute. knowing which account is wait. to charge Will you listen a minute? I'm going to have Mr. White phone you right away. This happens to be very important, so please don't leave until he phones. Oh, I certainly won't. I'm glad you see it my way, Mr. Kent. Well... It's these little details which are so important... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. See you in a few minutes, Darwin. Oh, all right, Mr. Kent. Wow. But he writes himself a voucher every time he buys a stick of gum. Oh, there you are, Jim. Gosh. 
This gets worse and worse by the minute, Mr. Ken. What does? Did you get the phone number? Well, that's just the trouble. There is no phone number. There is no... What are you talking about? Information says there's no phone for Mrs. Walsh's rooming house at 407 Clover Street. No phone? Great Scott. His jaw dropping, Clark Kent stares at Jimmy Olsen in amazement. Only a few minutes ago, Perry White said he was calling from that address and that he and Lois Lane were in danger. What does this mean? What is the story in which White and Lois are involved? And what is the meaning of the other strange things which are baffling Kent? Well, fellows and girls, there are more and even stranger things to come. So don't miss a single episode of our fascinating new story. Tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, and follow The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. Say, gang, you know what fun it is to make your dog sit up and beg for something good to eat? Well, if you want to make sure your dog gets a good dinner that'll help keep him strong and husky, ask your mother to give him Kellogg's Grow Pup Dog Food. If you feed Grow Pup to your dog, along with his scraps of meat and fat, he ought to get along just fine. That kind of eating will help give him strong bones and teeth and muscles. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. Just see which your dog likes best, and ask Mother to feed it to him regularly. Remember, that's Kellogg's Grow Pup. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part one of The Story of the Century from the Adventures of Superman. As always, thanks for listening and for your continued support. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Bat Soup wherever you get your podcasts. Can't find us there? Drop us a line at batsouppodcast at gmail.com and we'll take care of it. You can also like us and reach out on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube. That'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Perry White say... Of all the stupid, annotated, every nincompoops I ever met, he takes the cake. Before the next exciting scenes of our adventure, please permit us to pause for a meeting of the Law and Order Roundtable, conducted by the Green Hornet. Good evening, friends. If you are between the ages of 15 and 21, please stop, think, and listen, because this message is intended especially for you. Undoubtedly, most of you are preparing yourselves now for the job of tomorrow. That's great. Keep up the good work. But along with preparing yourself for your chosen trade or profession, don't neglect to groom yourself for the job of good citizenship as well. Young Americans, America's hope for the future is in your hands. And that's why it's vitally important that you be well equipped to practice good citizenship, which in the final analysis is the foundation of good government. Incidentally, good government will not tolerate crooked politicians and dishonest officials. Consequently, racket cannot thrive or even exist. Boys and girls, learn all you can now about how your government works. Find out what makes it tick and why. Make it a habit to study both sides of every important political issue. And in addition, study the records of candidates who seek to run your government, locally or nationally. Vote for the candidate who is best qualified by education and experience, who has the best record for honesty, sincerity, and accomplishment. 